All right, welcome back um, to another episode of Eric's Repaint Tutorial. Um, so we're actually going to start repainting now, now that we've gone through all the setup and everything. So the first thing we're going to do is pick our colors. So there's a couple ways I normally go about this. Um, sometimes I will pull it from the company logo, for example, the Wells Fargo Challenger 300 um, that I just painted. That actually um, was formerly owned by Wachovia Bank, which was acquired by Wells Fargo. So I just used their company colors and built the paint based off of that. And then there's other times where, like today, I will just be using um, the color picker tool. So the colors on the hawker that we're painting don't exactly match the colors of the company's logo. So I'm just going to pick colors here. And normally you want to paint that's in a uh, picture that's in good light for something like this. You don't want something that's too light or too dark. Um, most of the time I never find something like that. And I usually end up adjusting my colors later to, to uh, suit my needs. So we'll grab our blue there. We'll click this button to add it to our color history. Press OK. Um, we'll pick green here. Same thing. OK. And then the gray, I'll probably just build off of the gray that I've been using for most of the paints that use gray. So we don't need this anymore. It looks out of that. So now we're on to here. So we said we're starting on the right side um, of the hawker. So we'll go ahead and increase our zoom, probably a little bit less than that down here, to the right side of the paint kit. So um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with the bottom blue stripe along the fuselage. So we'll create a layer that says blue. And we'll go ahead and press B, which is our paths tool in GIMP. And I'll go ahead and I'll go over to look at the picture, kind of get an eyeball. So you see you've got the rudder hinge right there. And the blue ends on the rudder just a little bit above that. So our first little anchor point, go ahead and we'll zoom in here. So there's our hinge right there. We'll go ahead and we'll set it right about here because we can expect that the wireframe probably ends right about here or so. Um, so we need a little bit more space for it to actually show up correctly. Um, end point of the blue, we go all the way down here. It's almost to the divider between the nose radome and the um, next section. So and it's about right in the middle. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that over here. So we see there's our nose radome. And right about there is probably going to be good. And then we come back for our last anchor point. We look at the bottom. It's right basically at the base of the tail. It's right about here. And that's basically our primary anchor points. Now we need to adjust it so the shape matches. So this is where we need to kind of figure out where the curve is added that you can see here. So if we look at it here, it basically goes right through the bottom of um, the store frame. So we're going to try to basically curve it so it looks like that. And it's basically straight from about the windows onward from what it appears. Um, so we'll go ahead and we will go add control and click on the segment. So that gives us a little curve point and we can adjust that as necessary. So um, looking back, that looks pretty good. And we'll add another one right here. We'll bring this down one down a lot because it's pretty thin at this point. Um, and that looks good as well. Now, obviously the issue here is you can see there's not a lot of space because of this anchor point. So we can either do something like this where we move this end like way back and that'll change. As you can see, we have space now. You've got to be careful though because you don't want it to be at an angle here or else it'll very obviously show and uh, when you fill your path. So I'm going to control Z that. What I'm going to do is you can kind of see it kind of holds a decent amount of same size all the way until right about here below the pitot tube where it starts to angle back down in. So I'm going to add another um, control point and hopefully I get the right line here. I don't, I did not. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this up just a little bit. And then I'm probably going to bring this back a little bit too. And I'm going to try to keep this parallel and parallel as much as possible. Let's 
So yeah, that looks a little better now. So we're trying to fit all three lines under this pitot tube right here. Um, that's probably about as good as it's probably going to get. Um, like I said, we can't be looking for perfection in this sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and fill my path. Uh, solid color anti-aliasing is what we want and we'll fill it. So now we've got a blue stripe along the entirety of our front here. It looks like we could probably move this down a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z and I'm going to go ahead and Try to move this down just a little bit. We might have to do here is control and use one of these, and that'll actually rotate the entire thing. So actually, hold on, shift, I think. Shift is the correct key. There we go. So that rotates the entire, both sides of this um, circle point that we have. And that looks a little bit better now. Let's go ahead and we'll fill that. And okay, cool. That probably looks uh, it looks pretty spot on for the most part. We can actually try this. Control, or actually no, shift. There we go. So we've got those two points selected, and we can move them together just down a little bit. And there, there. And then later, I'll talk to you how about how we're gonna add this little white space um, under here, probably in a later video towards the end. All right. So that's the basic blue part. Now, if you notice, it has a little black line underneath. Um, I'm going to keep this on the blue layer. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go to, um, we're going to duplicate our path, which is this unnamed path. That was the path we made for this blue line. So now we have this path. What we want to do is we can go ahead and uh, control shift click to get rid of these points. We don't want it on the top. We just want it on the bottom. So now we just have a bottom line that follows the exact outline. What we're going to do is we're going to stroke our path now. And we're probably going to do maybe a width of two. I hold on. we got to change to a black color first. So go ahead and we'll just go down here. There's black. I'm going to stroke this path. Probably we'll try a width of two to start. And as you can see, we've got a black line underneath. Um, looking at it, we maybe need a little bit more. So we'll, we'll edit the path, stroke it at, let's see, does 4 look good? Yeah, 4 is probably good. Now, as you can see, it kind of definitely takes over um, at the end here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to color pick um, a fuselage color. Um, we're going to zoom in a ton here. So we're really, really well zoomed in now. And I'm going to go ahead and choose my paint tool, which is P on GIMP. That's the shortcut for it. And we're going to take our paintbrush down to a very small width, and we're just going to try to get some of this black out. We just want to basically reduce the width of the line. And you don't have to be perfect with this. Um, Uh, I'm not very happy with that. We're going to zoom in even more, so we'll control and scroll in. We're going to get rid of all of this down at the end here, because we don't want the line to extend too far down past the blue. But as you can see, the blue starts to come back. We'll add the black back in. And obviously, like I said, this is not perfect in any way, shape, or form. Um, oops. We're just kind of creating a little bit of area right now where we can definitely have a little less. And then you can kind of see here, this is about where I'm going to stop, right about there because then the line starts to come in. So we'll zoom back out to about 100%. And obviously it does not look like the best, obviously down there, we'll probably have to go in and do a little bit more work there. Um, so it kind of looks like right about there, it looks like it's kind of cut off. 
um, but it looks a lot better than it did when it was just dominating the entire end of that paint. So um, stuff like that's not going to be that noticeable um, in real life or once you're done with the paint. So um, obviously, like I said, I'm going to refine that a little bit more, try to make that look a little smoother um, working in there. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. This is one of the things where we just can't really get that perfectly in the sim. So we've got the whole entire blue line done there. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint um, the other fuselage lines and touch this up off camera. Um, and then in the next video, we'll talk about working on the tail section and how we're going to do that.